renovations or if you were stereotyped like me because every time a lady says they wanted to get into anything that would need them to do renovations and all of that, I would say, Ish, I don't think this is going to be up to you. This is going to be for you because especially ladies that are, that are also working because renovations have got this bad breed, which is called contractors that um, are very stressful. So yes, but I then got my stereotypes were then um, shamed this week. So that's why I decided all the ladies need to, need to come through. Other than that, I want to say to you, John oh, Kio. Thank you. Nelly. No, no, you're fine. Just, just don't mute yourself. Eh? Don't, don't unmute yourself. Otherwise, you're good. So they say our success helps many. Our failures help no one. So never dim your light. When it's time to shine, always shine. Go out there and do good. Be successful and uh, share your success with all of us, with others, because you are successful or you are wherever you are today because of what the universe has given you, which is the environment and the people that assisted you to be, to be where you are today. So your success helps many, but your failures helps no one. So push yourself to success. And then secondly, just to get on the agenda, is that we're going to, actually we're going to skip the part about Ekasi properties because there's other, there's other news that I'm very excited about that I'm going to share with you uh, today. It's not about me, but I will share with you when the time comes. And then we talk about the winner's cycle, which is, uh, Sis Juliet is here with us today. Highly appreciate again her time. And then we're gonna talk about what's coming uh, next. As you know, whilst you're here, please have an open mind. Learn from what is going to be said to you. Learn from what is going to be said to you today or what's going to be shared today. Apply what you learn. Most, important, most importantly, be present. Don't do anything else whilst we, we are on this session. It's just one and a half hours. That's all. So please don't do what, don't, don't, just be here one and a half hours, Saturday morning, sacrifice it and then learn from what is being shared. Most important, oh, another thing that's also important is that you must then contribute. Ask Sister Juliet lots of questions. Obviously the time is limited. Now and then we'll have to cut and say uh, that's enough, but make sure that your question is uh, in. So what you can do as we, we speak to her, just drop your questions on the mic. Once we're done, uh, once I'm done with the, the things that I would want to, to, to lay the groundwork, then I will open it up for you guys to ask your questions. And then uh, once that is done, then uh, we then close and then we can then go enjoy our, our weekend. So when the time for question comes, uh, ask, co contribute. Follow us on our social media, that's part of the contribution, but also share what you're going to learn uh, to you, the, from uh, here today, just being disrupted by the, the people that are still coming through. So we're going to skip this. You know, I like talking about myself, but today I'm going to skip it. That's why I have a picture of me there. I like talking about myself and explaining what I do and all of that, but today I'm not about that. You know how I love um, this project, Ekasi Properties. I'm not gonna say much other than to say we, our only reason for existence as Ekasi Properties is to create wealth and to break the cycle of scarcity. Now, scarcity, scarcity of money, but also scarcity of information, which is why uh, we hear this this morning. Also, another thing that's also very important is our YouTube. If you're not on our YouTube, please um, 
go find it. It's called the Kasi Properties. Subscribe uh, to it because that's where we put all the material. That's where we put all the sessions. If you meet a, if you miss a session, you if you miss a session, having paid for it, you tell me. I will send you the link. If you did not pay for it, um, you'll find it on YouTube whenever it's um, it's posted. Another thing is that I heard that our WhatsApp group is full. So we're gonna make means, other means to um, make sure that you guys get our, our communication. But those that are already in the WhatsApp group, they will be getting our communication from us on the WhatsApp group. Now, why, why the round table? It's just to raise awareness more than anything else. We cannot teach you everything that you need to know about properties uh, on, on one session or in one and a half hours, but you can learn from what we talk about each and every Saturday. So it's for you to be here and don't sit in your small corner, but open yourself up, open yourself up, open your horizon and see what is it that other people are doing. So this week I had the pleasure of, of, of attending um, the Enterprise Development Fund uh, classes for those that are in the incubation program. And I met my good friend there, Tebuho Muloi, who is a, an expert when it comes to back-to-back -back deals. So if you want to learn back-to-back -back deals, let me know. I will uh, link you up with uh, Tebuho. It was also very nice to meet all of you or everyone that uh, we have connected through this online. We met um, at, at, the, at the classes, you can see there, the class that we attended, we're doing the legal aspects of property investing um, in that session. And uh, Siskanyi, I know she's here. You would be glad to know that Bushe's, Bushe's picture has been reduced. It's a bit smaller now, but even more than that, Siskanyi, I just wanted, then these are the news that I said, I, I want to share with you guys. This property that you see here, is a property of Siskany. Siskany is gonna to come to the round table uh, in in few weeks. I'm not really sure whether now I want to start with um, Ekasi, property, Ekasi investing in the next series, or I want to go straight to the um, investments that Sis, Siskany has done, which is was funded by GPF, the Gauteng uh, Fund, the Gauteng uh, Propeller Fund, is what, is that what it's called, yeah. So, since can you got the, the funding, 34 million, this project that you see here is not complete, obvious, I could not post all the pictures, but this is 34 million rands that uh, Kanye invested, uh, put on the ground. After tears, stress, emotional suffering, and anything and everything bad that you can think of that she has gone through, yesterday she told me that this property is now complete, has been handed over to her, and she's gonna start with um, the leasing. In fact, this morning she sent me a message to say, the funders are asking her where are the tenants. So Siskanyi, congratulations, well done. And uh, I, I really can't wait now to have you to come and share your story uh, with our community in here. Having said that, as you can see, we learn from a lot of people that we have had in the, in the round table. Part of those people we have had Euphonic, and like I said, we have had um, uh, uh, Proverb. We have also had, we also had Vangile and uh, Palisa, who's into stock files. And then our resident mentor, Nigel, is gonna be in uh, next weekend. So if you don't get your questions answered today, uh, know that Nigel is here next week to answer your questions. But today, the lady of the moment, uh, Juliet um, Mkakeza, he's, she's here, and uh, we highly appreciate her time. She's a, she's a very passionate. She's very passionate about property. She says, out of the viruses, she did not even get the coronavirus. The virus that got her and stuck with her is the property virus. She found purpose and livelihood in, in property. Her mission is to 
be a, 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 a professional property player. She owns a company, property company called uh, Zenati. Her main strategy is buy to let. She's focusing on the uh, residential market and mixed use uh, properties. And um, in future, she would like to do, in future, she would like to do uh, property developments in the, both in the greenfield and the brownfield uh, projects. If you don't know what is greenfield and brownfield, you are about to learn something today. Today, we're going to be talk, talking mainly about other people's money. Last week, we had a tough year. And they shared with us their funding strategy. Sis Juliet is being funded by, by TAF. So that's why we wanted to have her here. And that's what we're going to be doing going forward. We're going to have funders in each and every series. We're going to have a funder. And if we can, we're going to get a client of theirs so that they can come and share with us how they got the, the funding. So, uh, Sister Juliet, here are your properties. Both of them, they look um, beautiful. We're going to be starting with you. Maybe let's just say welcome to you and uh, thank you for uh, giving us a moment to be with us here. Thank you for having me. Great. Um, let me just mute. Let's get started. Now, the reason why we have this um, session that we call Winner Cycle, it's because of in the, in the Black families, money is not talked about. Even if money is talked about, property is the last thing that is uh, talked about. We, like you also said to me, we only see property as a place to live in. We don't see property as uh, investment. But obviously, you have gone through that, and the guests that we have in this session, in this um, yeah session, we we is is the people that have gone through beyond those kinds of limitations. They have started doing things that are exciting, and uh, just want to say congratulations to you on your your journey in the property sector, and uh, you are yeah, inspired by your your vision. Maybe if we can just go back, let's just start from the from the beginning. Let's understand you. If you can just tell us about your your childhood and how did your childhood uh, set up for the person that set you up for the person that you are today? Okay, thank you. Um, I would say my childhood. I, I come back. I come from a background that is similar to most black. Um, most people who come from black families, whereby you have got a family that aspire that you can be somebody one day, they put their all that you must get uh, educated, but you find that there is limitation in terms of money in the sense that you can, you know, you've got your home. It's a nice clean home, decent, but no, no luxuries. You know, mm -hmm. and um, and the focus is that you must go to school, you must learn because if you are educated, you can be, you know, education will open doors for you. And um, you know, mainly then you you grow up, you go to school. After that, you when you complete, you look for a job. So there has I I, I wouldn't say I think we have been. I've been groomed to work for somebody, not groomed to work for myself. Mm. Uh, um, mm. There hasn't been, uh, and I think that is very common in most black families. And um, that is where you find that in most cases, when you complete, you get whatever qualification, you get frustrated, you go out there, you don't find a job. You never think about entrepreneurship and, 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 and studying your own thing. So I, I grew up for, from, you know, I come from the same background or environment. So I've completed, then I started working, I worked for different companies and so on, but, and, and I, I started, you know, getting frustrated in each, you know, in all these different organizations I've been, then there was this high 
help us, you know, um, getting into business, getting into tenders. You try this, you partner, partner with this one, I partner with that one, I start my own thing. And, but some, some ventures, they fail, some are promising, there are lots of cheers and, and backstabbing and all those things. <laughs> but um, long story short, through all these things that I've gone through, there's always been something which kept on coming back, which was property. And I remember when I was a child, I used to love drawing houses. I used to be fascinated, like driving around, maybe going around, whether it's in a taxi or what, because unfortunately, I did, uh, my parents didn't have a luxury of having a car. So we had to, you know, mode of transport was a taxi. So being in a taxi, I'll be looking at all these beautiful houses and so on and thinking that, you know, I mean, obviously appreciating the houses and wondering if one day can I be able to afford such houses. But anyway, um, in my frustration in, in corporate and trying to start my own thing, I came back to what fascinated me, what, what excited me, you know, trying to rediscover myself, what do I like to do? Because I think I was always chasing other people's dreams, not my dream. Mm -hmm. If I hear Ndumi so is doing stationery and is doing very well, I'm like, oh, stationery is paying. Is it making lots of money? Then there I am, I'm also selling stationery. If I hear somebody is doing maybe training, then, oh, I, I'm educated. I can also train people. And then there I am running after training. But I realized that throughout, I mean, in, all, in doing that, I kept on having, you know, although I would succeed and make a bit of money, get customers, but I constantly had this frustration that I don't think I'm happy. Up until then, you know, I sat and talked to myself and I realized that what I like to do is property. And yeah, and that's a brief background about myself. And uh, yeah, so I, I'm in, in, in the space that I think I'm happy now to be in. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You are in a good space because obviously, when once once you get closer to your passion, then that's where you get a living because your your when you when you are pursuing your passion, it does not feel like working. That's what I've had. I'm not sure if I'm I'm in I'm in the right space, but I just I can just go for on and on and on about property once I get started. Hence, now today we have these roundtables. So yeah, no, thank you for that. Are you, have you done any self-development uh, courses, especially around uh, property? Yes, uh, uh, I've been very fortunate. Um, having been funded by TAF, TAF had a, a program, uh, which is uh, like a property development program for people that they have funded. So, um, so I've been very fortunate to be one of the people who were, you know, trained in that program. And then I, I suppose maybe they did talk about it, um, maybe in the session we had with Taft. Yes. Mm -hmm. So that also gave me a, a bit of an introduction into property because I've always just followed my gut instinct in terms of property and maybe reading some books and so on in order to understand what property is all about. So uh, the training that I got from TAF, it was a bit of the first formal training that I had, which, which was an eye opener for me. And I'm also um, part of the EDTP um, Enterprise Development Property Fund. I'm one of the, um, the candidates there. So I joined last year. So I also got an opportunity to get a bit of information about property, you know, sort of widening my knowledge about property, the do's and don'ts and, and all those things. I'm still learning in a learning phase. Um, so yeah, so I've got a bit of information, but I'm also in the process of um, learning more. Yeah, that's great. I'm asking you about education because obviously it's, it's very important. There's a lot of people who make lots of mistakes um, before they get educated. Yes, yeah, you wanted to come in? 
Are you referring to my um, education within the property space or just my education um, academic? Yeah, no, no, I'm referring about the property space because that's what I've realized that that's the education that actually we're supposed to be supposed to be oh, getting yeah. even from schools because uh, the one that we get from schools, there's a, they, they, there are people that benefit from it, but most people mm. actually learn more when they are outside school than when they are in, in school. Yeah, but also another thing which I could add besides the, the training that I've, I've received, I think I've learned a lot from people. My advice is that if you are in property space and surround yourself with people who, who, who have got experience, who have been there, done that, who have, um, you know, who have experienced all the challenges because um, I find that I've learned so much from people. Some of the things that you learn from information sharing, they're things that they're not documented. Mm -hmm. So it's things that they cannot teach you in class, but a person can, you know, tell you that have experienced this and you find that you relate to that. And it can also uh, assist you, prevent you from making similar mistakes. Yes, I cannot. Thank, thank you for that. I cannot emphasize that um, enough. In fact, I've made myself available to for to share my my knowledge for to end for with anyone who's willing to to learn from me. I'm 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 available. I you, that that is that is critical because you can learn from books. You can attend the classes, but it's unlikely that the books and the classes will give you. The, the what you're going to experience in the ground but once you are on the on on the ground things get to be a bit different hence we have uh, people like you today and i'm glad that you you are the one who's mentioning that which means ladies and gentlemen if you thought if you are not sure whether you should be here or not here she's telling you that you actually should be here because you, you need to learn from what she's going to to be sharing with us today before we get to property, let's just talk about you and your 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 failures. Have you experienced any any failures, and how have those uh, taught you? Not necessarily here in property. How has failure uh, impacted your your life? Sure, um, I, I've experienced lots of failures. If I think if you want to be, you you know, there is that saying that when you see and a tip of an iceberg, you don't know what goes in underneath, what does it take? <laughs> you just see only the top, that little top, but there is so much that goes underneath, which is lots of frustrations, lots of challenges, lots of tears. And, but um, what I can say is that in all of that perseverance, you know, uh, it's very important and not giving up in what you want to achieve. In mm -hmm. my case, yes. I mean, I've tried different types of um, businesses. I've partnered with uh, different people trying this and that. Um, in some cases whereby you, you, you would maybe partner in going to a partnership. I, I won't refer to specifics, but those are some yes. of the experiences I had whereby we would partner with people to start a business. And then uh, on this incident, we started, we contributed money, and then the business started running. When the business starts to generate money, you start seeing different characters. Mm -hmm. You start fighting because there is money, because um, you don't have a common objective. Because other people, when they see money coming in, they think it's money to take and spend, not mm. to reinvest in a business. Mm. Then you start seeing all these characters, which is what I've learned is that it's very important to choose people that you go into business with. You must get like-minded people, not just because you are friends, you assume that you make good business partners. Yes. So for me, those were some of the experiences whereby I, I was in a, in, in, a, in a partnership with friends. So I lost quite a lot of friends actually in my journey of trying to, to make it in business. 
friends, we partnered. When money was there, then we started fighting. Then we had to call it quits. In some instances, um, you know, uh, like one of the frustrations I had, uh, it was whereby I decided to go on my own. And then um, the business that I was doing, it was buying and supplying coal. It went okay for a while, but uh, the frustration is that I became a professional tender writer. <laughs> so <laughs> I write and write all these tenders. You end up not getting any anything, but or either I would get maybe a tender there, then I'm sitting for the next six months without a, a, a contract, you know? Yes. So the, the amount you might have made lots of money at a certain time, but you've got the whole six months with no income. So all those frustrations, I think those are the challenges of trying to make it in business. But um, my belief is that uh, you mustn't give up. If you want to succeed, you know, uh, you just need to keep on uh, persevering. You know, my favorite phrase uh, is, uh, is, is you can't, you have to stand up. Even if you are tired, you go and you hustle. People, mm -hmm. when they ask me, you know, what, what do you do? Um, you know, all these titles that people have. I tell people I'm a professional hustler because I, I keep on trying and trying, you know, weigh the opportunities. I try to go for the opportunities, but in the process, there are quite a lot of tears. Yeah, I, I, did, I did say to Ukanyi that you, you guys need to have tea uh, because you seem to be, <laughs> you seem to be have lot in common. Uh, yeah. Okay. To, 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 talking about talking about um, you being a hustler, what do you what 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 do you think are the five traits or characteristics that makes you uh, or that have helped you to be uh, uh, to be successful? Um, I think. Um... As a person, I'm able to motivate myself. I fall, but I, um, I, I pick myself up. I fall. I think maybe a lot of women will relate to that, whereby you fall, you cry, and you, you decide you need to pick yourself up mm -hmm. and go out there and face the world. So um, I'm good at that. So no matter, I tell myself, no matter how many times I fall, you know, I look at children, children, uh, you know, when a kid, a kid, you find that in order to learn, they don't start running. You know, they crawl, they start taking a few steps, they fall, but they end up walking and not only walking, walking and running mm -hmm. because they don't give up. So mm -hmm. that's me. Mm -hmm. I, I don't give up. And then I think another thing as well is um, looking for information. I always try and learn from people who have been there, who have done it. And I am not shy to say I am failing. I'm not making it. Mm -hmm. I don't, um, I'm honest to myself. And uh, if I need help, you know, I raised my hand that I need help, I'm drowning, please help. Mm -hmm. So I think those are some of the characteristics which make me to succeed. And I've built a thick skin. Don't allow anything to put me down. Yes, certain things, they come, the challenges and disappointments, but I don't, um, I refuse to to give up. Mm -hmm. I think that's the things that make me to be still standing today. Great, great to hear that because uh, if once once you give up, you are ready to go back to the source. So one yeah. while you're still here, you must keep on going. I mean, I've had situations whereby, you know, when with, with business, more especially small businesses, there are quite a lot of um, challenges and frustrations. I think a lot of people who are here will relate to that. 
I've had so many situations whereby you find, I get so frustrated, uh, uh, you know, being frustrated, sometimes you work for your employees, meaning you work, you don't make money. The only money that yes. you make is enough to pay your staff and your expenses. Mm. And I've had situations whereby I would say, you know what, I've got some education. Let me go and dust my papers and go and look for a job. <laughs> and, and and every time I remember being in, in at a level where I thought that I think I need to go back and mm -hmm. uh, then there was that small voice saying to me if you go back you will never come out again because you'll be scared mm -hmm. so for me having been out of corporate and being out there I must say I've learned a lot and um, I have grown so much compared to when I was in corporate. Yes. So I don't regret the move that I took. Great. Let, let me just ask one yeah. last one before we get to properties. Is there any other business that you're doing now other than property? Yeah, currently I am doing, but it's, it's not like something major. Um, you know, like doing your maintenance, because what I tried, it's actually what, I, what, I, what I've done with my business is try to structure everything around property. Because um, like I was saying, I was doing coal, which is not that something that I've stopped doing completely. I am still doing, but I'm not pursuing it that much. Yeah, I'm just doing it to feed the beast, which is property. <laughs> because me, where I want to be, it is in property. I think I'm busy wasting my time trying to do other businesses. Therefore, I took um, a decision that I'm not going to make, waste my resources anymore in any other things. I'm going to focus on property, but just diversify and do other, um, you know, things within property which can bring me, make me money in the meantime. Because property, you know, is, is investment is long term. Mm -hmm. So unfortunately, mm -hmm. the bills need to be paid whilst you're waiting for the long term. Yes, yeah. And and I must say that I've noticed that the most successful business models is those models that are around the same industry. For instance, you take Discovery. Discovery has got lots of businesses, but they are all around health and, and, and insurance. So mm -hmm. I think I think I think um, if if one structures their business in such a way that it focuses on the one thing, so that it, it also creates other opportunities as well. You go and to renovate the house, but then you end up mm -hmm. buying that house. You mm -hmm. you are an agent selling the house. You end up doing other things about about that house. So yeah, great to hear that um, you've decided to consolidate everything into property. Okay, let's let's move let's move yeah. into let's move into property. Let's start from the from the beginning. How did you how do you then get started in in property? I uh, I started whilst I was still working. Um, but obviously, but but my first property. Actually, when I started, when people, you know, when you completed university and you start your first job, and everybody's saying, "I want to buy a car." Mm -hmm. I didn't want to buy a car. I wanted to buy a house. So when my friends were buying cars, I was using a taxi, but I had a house. I remember my first house, um, I didn't have curtains. My curtains were, were, were um, newspapers. We used to mm. call my house Bambir's that <laughs> because I couldn't afford <laughs> So I started, I got a, uh, obviously a bond because I, I was working, which is easier if you're working to get a bond. And then I got my first property. And then from there, I made sure that I, I, I had an access bond. So what I did, I bought my second property through the access bond, mm -hmm. through the money, the bond that I had for the first property. And that I learned from a book. I can't remember which book uh, I was reading, but one of these property books. So, and then it went obviously with jobs, getting better salary, qualifying for higher uh, 
a higher bond, then I got my second bond. And then now I reach the ceiling, I couldn't uh, get any funding anymore because now I had reached the ceiling. Then my dreams were limited then, by then I couldn't dream beyond. But I always had this thing that I want to pursue, get more property. And then um, I think it was 2016, 17, I learned about TAF. Then I wanted a property in the Eastern Cape. I approached them and they told me that they could fund, but not in that area. I was very frustrated because I was emotionally um, attached to the property. I, mm. I didn't understand that if you want to be in property, if you want to do property as a business, you mustn't be emotionally attached to the business side of whether it does make business sense. Mm. Me, I had those rose colored glasses and I thought that this is the property that I want and they, they must find me. Long story short, I ended up giving up because they couldn't find me because it was not in the area that they were finding. I left and then a year later, I saw another property. Then I approached them again and I said to them, this time I've got the property in the right area. And then they did the due diligence and then they assessed me and I qualified and they funded me. Mm -hmm. So, and then oh, that opened up my dreaming. I now started to dream beyond the limitation was removed, which was the funding from the commercial banks. And then as soon as I heard that I could, they could even find more properties here, I started hunting, you know. <laughs> <laughs> then, um, <laughs> then up until I got my second property and I approached them again. And they looked at my trade record, whether have I been managing the first investment that I uh, they funded, have I been paying well and all the stuff. And then they funded the second one as well. So yeah, uh, I would say now with TAF, uh, I normally say they, they hold the pest strings. All I have to do is just look for the right property yes. and make sure that I deliver and then yes. I knock on their door. Yes. And, um, you know, I think for people like us, uh, more especially black people who don't have money, unfortunately we come from families whereby there is no money. Uh, organizations like TAF, they're very, very helpful. Mm. So I used to be very skeptical that, you know, uh, we hear there is funding, funding, they only fund to the people they know and so on. You know, I'm proof that they don't only fund people they know and that they do fund. So, yeah. Okay. So people mustn't be scared to approach them. Okay. We're going to get, we're going to get to the properties and, and, uh, and tough. Just want to find out two things. Do you still own the... Um... The, the, the initial properties, the three properties? I still own them. You still own them. How do you, how yeah. do you, how do you own your, your properties? I, what, how, under what structure? Are they in your personal name, company, trust, or combination? How do you? I think when I started, they were in my personal name. They were the ones that I acquired in my personal name because then I was in, um, because firstly to get a bond, it has to be, you know, the, the, the banks would have to know what vehicle you are using. And it was easier for me to get funding because, um, because of the bond issue and to get the thing in my personal capacity. And then, sorry, the other house, um, sorry, sorry. No problem. The other properties I own through the company, um, which I think is a better vehicle to use than owning new personal capacity. Mm. But then that I started doing where after learning that this is the, the best route to follow. 
because in that case, you kind of separate the, the liability, you know, because I mean, in the company is a separate entity to you as a person, you know, opposed to personal. So, yeah. Okay. So yeah. currently I've got two, 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 actually I've got, I think three structures because I've got personal trust and, and, and the company. Okay, do you, do you own the shares in the company or the shares in the company, they are owned by the trust? I own the shares in the company currently. But I've come to learn that um, the, the having a trust being the owner to the company might be the best route. Like I'm saying, I'm still learning as well. Yes. But I understand that's the best route to follow. Yes. I'm glad. Mm -hmm. I'm glad that it's. I'm glad that it's coming out, um, even from people like you who are, who have moved up um, the ladder. That as you progress with your investing, you are going to be learning new things. Don't want mm -hmm. to know. Don't want to know everything before you start investing because that's really never going to happen. You'll never get started if you want to read every property book. You want to attend every property course what needs to happen is that everyone must start investing and then you're going to learn that no 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 i bought wrong from on buying on my personal name i'm actually supposed to use a company then you just move on you 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 buy in a company when you learn that there needs to be a trust that owns the the company then you continue you 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 fix the structure you go on but the journey the the the, the journey must continue otherwise you'll never get started Okay. But what, what I also, sorry, can I just comment? Yes. What I would advise people who haven't started um, owning in their personal capacity, people who, who, who maybe they're starting, they want to be in the property, if possible, rather go the, the, the company route or the trust route from the onset. Because once you start, maybe you own in your personal capacity, and now you want to transfer that property from your personal capacity to the company, mm. that might trigger the transfer cost expenses and you mm. don't want that. So now, if it's possible to go directly, rather go directly and, 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 and avoid owning in your personal capacity. Because of the change of the ownership from you as a person to a company, it will definitely trigger the transfer cost. So avoid that. Yes, yeah, no, thanks, thanks for that. And that, that, that is, that's a very important um, advice because like you're saying, it's very costly. I'm stuck with the properties in my personal name now because I'm still wondering whether I want to pay the cost, which one is gonna be the best option? Must I pay the cost or must I get rid of the properties rather and take the money, go invest it uh, somewhere else? It's a decision that I still need to make. It's a decision that I'm sure you just still need to make, but if you are here today, you're lucky because now you are being advised to say, don't buy on your personal name, you rather buy uh, using a company if you still want to understand the, 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 the trust structure. But actually the, 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 the best structure is that you must have a trust that owns the company. The company then owns uh, the properties. If you want to know more about that, you can contact me or I can refer to you to some videos that we have done in the past where this was discussed. Now, Sister Juliet, I want to talk to you now about this particular property. Uh -huh. this, 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 this beauty. Where is where is this property? This this is the current one that you're currently renovating, huh? Yes. Okay. It's in, well, yes. It's in Krugerstorp. Krugerstorp. Okay. Yes. How did you find it, and what was the um, um, what's this? The 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 the, um, the nature of the property when you found it, the, the the yeah the condition. That's what the word I'm looking for. How was the condition of sure. the property when you found when it? When I found this property, it was in a horrible state. It was um, you know, like partly vandalized. The the cellar, um, you know, like when a building is almost hijacked because it was not necessarily hijacked, but the seller neglected the property. And from my understanding, he had, a, I don't know whether a caretaker who was there in charge, who really didn't care much. 
And then apparently that caretaker sometimes, um, you know, the money that, I don't understand why uh, the money, some of the money would be paid to the caretaker, but the, there were certain monies that were paid by tenants to the caretaker. The caretaker would pocket the money and not fix the things in the building. So there were quite a lot of um, show problems with the building, starting from the roof. The roof was leaking. Mm. You can imagine if the roof is leaking, the, how are the ceilings, mm. the walls, the plumbing? I, I think almost... Almost everything was bad in this building. The only thing which was good is that the solid structure of the building. Mm. But I had to fix almost everything. Mm. The windows, almost all the windows are broken. Um, it was a nightmare. <laughs> but you are fixing that nightmare now. How, how did you find the property? Were you just driving around and you found it or you've got someone that was scouting for you, how did you find it? Um, my hobby is looking for property. When people say my hobby is running, my hobby is this and that, my hobby is looking for property. Um, so in the process of looking for property, I find uh, good properties. Mm -hmm. That's how I found this property. I found it, uh, and, and, and also, I think in the process, I always look at make sure the location is right. Location is very important. Yes. Yeah, so then I, I found it actually on, on property 24. And then I went and looked at the property, and then I made an offer. So, yeah. And uh, I would say I, I went and, um, you know, tried as to, to, to inspect the property. And I, I looked at the current state and uh, thought if, if I fix it, how the condition, how it could be. And then obviously I also looked at the viability of investing in this building. Will I be able to get my money back? Will I be able to pay the bond? Will I be able to pay the municipality? And will I still have some money to keep for maintenance and so on? So I requested the, um, the rent roll and the municipality statements and looked at those. Then I saw, okay, I can, if I made an offer in this building, then it's possible that I could be able to meet all those expenses or commitments. Then I made an offer. Once I had an offer on I pushed tough and told them this is the building I'm interested in and can they please help me with funding. They came out, looked at the building, they liked it, and we started the paperwork. Yes. And, uh, and that's it. And then obviously there was quite a lot of renovation work involved. Mm. Yeah. And then how, 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 how many... Is, is this two bedrooms, one bedrooms? How many, um, how many of them? Uh, the units are 10, but 10 units. And then the, there are two bedrooms. Um, there is seven, two bedrooms and um, one, no, uh, one bedrooms. But because of the size of the units, I've, con I've converted them. I'm renting out the building, not as the unit. I'm renting it out as rooms. So what I've done, I've converted, like say maybe in each and every unit, what I've done, I, 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 I rent out maybe like, let's say we say it's unit one, I'll have unit one A, one B, one C, which is those are the number of the rooms. So I'm making like a communal, you know, like when, you, when you've got a house and make it a, they share the kitchen and the bathrooms. And that's precisely what's happening here. So I've converted the baths into showers because of the number of people that are involved. And then um, for that each and every room, they've got wardrobes, things like that, so that um, it is rentable as rooms. And the reason why I did that, I realized that there is a market in this area for rooms instead of flats. Mm -hmm. 
I mean, not that the flats, the demand is not there. There is demand from, um, for flats, but I realized that I could make more money if I did it as, as rooms instead of renting it as flats. Okay, thank you. Guys, there's someone whose um, mic is unmuted. Please mute yourself. It's difficult. There's a lot of people today, so it's difficult for me to move around trying to find out who, who that is. Yes, yeah. I've, I've also noted because I also invest in the in the inner city and I've noted that the move in the inner city is to subdivide. I think it's also because of the economic conditions. They subdivide mm. the, the rooms and sorry, the, the, the unit and make rooms inside the unit. But obviously it must be conducive. It must be a livable um, area. We don't want to create uh, squatters. Yeah. Um, mm. and, and I can give a shout out for my friend who's here, Brian. He does that. That's what that's his work. He does petitioning. I'm not sure how far he goes. If 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 anyone wants to create rooms, I know around Pretoria. Um he's he's here, he lives here in Pretoria. So if you want to create petition your 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 apartments, give me a, a shout out. Uh, in fact, Brian, please share your, your contact details so that people can can talk to you. And then you can go on the chat and share your contact details so that people can talk to you who want um, uh, uh, subdivide their their units. Now, one thing one thing I like about uh, the tough model of, of funding is that once you are in them, you almost likely you unlikely to to fail because they they do a thorough assessment of the of the of the building. In fact, at least that's what I've heard. They do a thorough assessment of the building. They also look at the, the, the financing of the building, whether the, the, your, your business plan, whether the way you want to structure your building is going to be able to then uh, give you profit, but also be able to, 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 to pay back their loan. But uh, if I don't mind, I don't know if you mind sharing with us, how much, how much uh, did, you, did you apply for? How much of the building number one and how much did you apply for and on with with uh, TAF and whether they gave you the full amount. Okay. Um. Firstly, uh, this building I got it for <laughs> two million. Now, uh, my advice is that um, when you make an offer, don't be very emotional. Look at the condition of the building and use that as your negotiating tools, mm -hmm. because this building. It was on, on the market for, I think it was 3.5 million, if I'm not wrong. And then I went and looked at the condition of the building. I took pictures of the building, all the things that were wrong. And then after that, I put my offer, um, which was almost half of what the person was selling the building for. And I justified my offer with, <laughs> supporting pictures of the condition of the building and the amount of money I need to spend on this building. To have it on. So just to, to give you a background about this building, in 2008, the, the seller of the building bought this building in 2008, each and every unit was, she bought it I think at about 395 each unit. Yeah. So if you're going to buy 395, that means because the building was about 3,950,000. And here I am buying it for half the price of what she bought it at in 2008. And that created quite a lot of problem for the seller because the banks were in denial that you can't be selling this half of, at half price because she still owes the banks the money but then they had to do their own evaluation to see the condition because I was justifying the amount that I was offering. And then each and every bank, because she had um, bonds from different banks, they had to come and do the assessment and see if you know my offer was reasonable. So yeah, then, I, um, then once they, they realized the offer is realistic and reasonable, then they accepted. But anyway, I approached TAF, TAF, they looked at the building and then they gave me the money to buy the building and they gave me 500,000 to fix the building. So other, so which means what they would do 
is that they look at the building and then you get a quotation of all the things that needs to be fixed and the cost. So in applying for the funding, it was funding to buy and then the amount of getting the building into the condition that would be suitable for rental. Okay, that last, last, last week they told us that they, they give 80% of the funding and then you must then come up with the 20%. How did you manage that? Yes, yes, yes they do. Uh, um, I think the 20%, the objective is that you must be getting commitment for you because you know how people are. If they didn't contribute anything, people, they tend not to take the investment seriously. But once people have taken out their own money and spent their own money in the building, because it's their money, they start you know, taking the investment seriously. So yes, I had to raise the 20%. And then they've also got um, a fund, which is called Into Togo. Yes. Into Togo, which you can also tap into. Maybe they can help you with a portion of the 20%, depending on, on, on what. But the circumstances, like you understand, tough um, their character funder they would look at your situation as an individual, whether, you know, can you raise the 20%? If not, can they be able to help you with a portion of that? So, so it depends. They look at a person as an individual. Okay, that's, that's great. Let's, let's move on to this one. Mm -hmm. Let's hear the story of this one. Where is this one and how did you find it? Well, this one is in Poisons. Um, I also find find found it on property twenty four, mm. and then I found it whilst I was doing my hobby, <laughs> which is searching for profit. Yeah, yeah, a strange <laughs> animal. <laughs> so yeah, so um, luckily this building it was in a very good condition. Uh, the seller looked after the building very well. I, there wasn't much maintenance. Uh, I think I spent about 150,000 on it to fix the, um, the, the, the kitchens and the bathrooms because they were, you know, old and, in, you know, because of wear and tear, they didn't look very nice. So I retiled the kitchen and the bathrooms and just made them nice, changed tabs, they, you know. And then also another feature that I put is to put around the, the fence because it was those buildings which didn't have a fence in front. I put in a palisade fence, um, gate motor, try to make sure that it's just like nice and secure because I, I find that people when they're in a secured area, then chances of uh, having full vacancy, they are high. Mm. Unlike a building that is not secured. Mm. So this one has got 12 units, uh, eight two bedrooms, and four um, one bedrooms. But the one bedrooms, they're so big, they look almost like um, two bedrooms. And then it has got eight um, cup, um, garages, and then the parking space there that you see in front. Yeah. And this one, you did not subdivide it, the units? No, this one, I didn't subdivide it. OK. I'm just renting it as is. Mm -hmm. So the people there, they've got money. <laughs> they do. <laughs> <laughs> in Jobe. I mean, in West Rent, West Rent, I mean, you, you don't have money. So Jobe, yeah, yeah. I think they have got money, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and in terms of the funding, how did this one work? How much was it and uh, did you get the full amount? Yeah, this one was, it was 3 million. Yeah. And then um, I had to raise the 20% um, even in this one. So what I did, I had um, a piece of land that I, I, I had, which was very nice. And when I bought it, I... I um, I thought I was going to develop uh, one day and build a nice property there. So I went and sold the property because I didn't have the 20%. So mm. I sold that property 
in order to get my 20%. Okay. So yeah, so then in that way, I managed to raise my 20%. Okay. Do you think with Taft, do you think it was easier when you went back for the second building than when it was for the first building for them to give you the funding? I think it was easier when I went with for the second one, because with the first one, sure, they, they want to know everything about you. Mm. Even your cat, how it is, is it black or white? <laughs> <laughs> How many kids do you have? All that. I think just they, they want to get the background information about you. Not only because normally your commercial banks, uh, your traditional banks, they want to look at your finances. When the TAF doesn't yes. only look at your finances, they also look at um, you as an individual. But you know, like if we help this person, has the this person uh, is she or he the type of person? who can be able to make it in this industry. Maybe currently that person hasn't been making it due to financial constraints, you know, mm -hmm. but character wise, you've got what it takes. I think those are the things they, they want to know. And if they think that you've got a good property and you've got what it takes, they will find you. Okay. Tell me, do you manage these properties yourself or you've got um, a property manager? I've got a property manager. What TAF does, um, they require that you sign a two-year contract with a credible um, property managing agent Thank to manage you. the property for you. But having said, besides that, I think it's advisable to use a managing agent because firstly, it takes away the headache, it removes the headache for you because you know tenants can complain now is this, now the other, now that. But now if you've got a managing agent, they can manage that for you, which makes it easier for even people who are working, who want to invest in property. If they've got a credible managing agent, they've got a peace of mind that their property is in good hands. But now if you have to self-manage, then it means you must sit through all those little things that um, the tenants might be complaining about or maintenance issues and, and stuff like that. You know, mm. and sometimes some other people you find that they can be very um, sympathetic to sub stories, which sometimes can be told by tenants. Hey, I've just lost my job. Hey, uh, this and that. So if you are using an agent, agents that are formal, you know, it's a formal institution. They'll listen to the story, but they've got a way of it, of handling these things. Unlike if you're doing it personally. Okay. So I don't, I don't get involved. I use an agent. What I do, I manage the agent. So mm -hmm. that's what I don't <laughs> give your property to the agent and, and you relax, manage the agent. I manage the agent. And besides, I want to know each and every, I'm, I'm doing like micromanaging. I want to know each and everything that happens. Like if I get a statement of the end of the month, I look at my rent rolls, I look at my, um, the, the municipality statements. I want to know these yes. finer details, what's happening. If the agent, they say there's a maintenance issue that needs to be addressed. I don't just approve and say, go ahead and fix. I want to know how much is it going to cost the quotation? How much is it going to cost? And if that quotation is reasonable, because what you must remember now, if you don't manage those little amounts, you're going to find yourself with nothing, with no money. Because most of your money when you start is taken by the bond and the municipality. Mm -hmm. So you need to manage the sense. So which is what, 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 what I do, I manage each and every sense. And another thing as well, I make sure I visit the property. I don't say because I've got a managing agent, I don't go to the building. I've got a caretaker, I don't go to the building. I make sure that at least even if I don't have time, maybe once or twice a month, I must go and see that building and see what's happening and so on. So that when they tell me that there's a problem like this and that, I can I can understand what they're talking about. So, okay, and lastly, how has um, COVID affected you, your the investments? Sure, it did. COVID affected a lot of people. Um, 
on this property, uh, there were some other people of, of, you know, they lost their jobs, others were out of work for a while. So I had to give a rental discount to keep the good tenants. Mm -hmm. And others um, for other months, because I couldn't do it for a number of months. Mm -hmm. And others, what I did, I made arrangements with them that, you know, Maybe for one month, I gave rental discounts. The other month is that maybe uh, when they're back at work, they have to repay that rental, but you know, not in a lump sum in terms. Yes. Okay. Thank you for that. Okay. Me and you can chat for the whole day. I've got so many things, so much things to, to ask you, but I think let's open it up to the audience and see uh, if uh, you guys have got any questions. And I, they, there's a lot of things that's going on on the chat, but let, let's rather go to Michelle, who's already raised the, his hand. Let, let's go with the hands rather than the, the chat. In the meantime, I will go to the chat and see what if there's any question that has not been answered that I would like to uh, pose to you. Michelle, unmute yourself and um, ask. Hey, thank you, Chair. And uh, so I must I must say I'm pleased to meet. Uh, I call you Juliet Oman. Oman <laughs> Yeah. Uh, I, I'm really grateful to have met uh, Mem Tagaza. When I met her, it was when we were doing a, a project where she wanted a rezoning, and we we did manage to get the rezoning from with Rand West in one of her brownfield project. But um, I might say she's the only person who made me to realize this song, Ya Mendoza. I used to hear it, but not making sense of it. The one that says, mm. you hardly hear this kind of statement from, from women. But uh, given this uh, a platform that you created, especially for, for women, I must say, and I believe that indeed women are taking charge in this country. And we really need to, 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 to appreciate that. Uh, to Umam Juliet and the like-minded is to say, these platforms will definitely create a, 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 a wealth amongst ourselves. And it's high time that we need to support uh, one another. Because when you're sitting in your little corner, you realize that everything is impossible. But when you have those who have went through it, it becomes much more easier. I remember one day when she says to me, when well, you're very lucky because you're, 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 you're still young, uh, I must say, uh, Julian is a legend, and a lot I have learned from from her, which which makes me feel uh, 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 much welcomed in this in this journey. And to Julian and the likes of uh, Abokani, big up to you guys. I strongly believe that as a team, there is a lot that is still going to be achieved. I thank you. Thanks, thanks, Marceline. Um, thanks for that. Let's move on to to Jabu. We don't have much time, so let's let's keep on running. Jabulani. Yes, thank you, uh, Bunimi. So, uh, I just want to ask: um, when you um, the, the first property that you bought, funded by TEF, right? You said you made an offer of uh, two million. So, I just want. I, I just firstly, I want to find out that two million offer that you made. Was, did you get professional advice there, or was it based on your on your, on your calculations in terms of the in terms of the entire project? And um, also the second question is when you get funded by TEF. Um, so I, I I I think probably maybe you were still uh, employed by them. Uh, how did you manage uh, that relationship? Because I suppose you had to you know engage TEF during the day and also be. Uh, be 
Okay. Sister Juliet, did you? Did okay, you I didn't question? get the last question. I didn't get the last question. The, uh, the... He wants... can, can you? Oh, yes, he wants... uh, I, I'm just. I'm just asking in terms of managing the, you know, engagement with TEF uh, when they were funding mm -hmm. for the mm -hmm. first uh, property. So I mm -hmm. suppose you were still uh, employed at the time, full-time employment, um, mm -hmm. and also you were buying the property. So with TEF providing the different uh, 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 trainings, um, so I suppose you had to, you know, go to some of the trainings during the day and uh, also engage with them in terms of uh, you know, trying to get funding for the property. How did you manage all of that whilst you did? I, um, okay, the first question, it was, uh, if I'm correct, the first question was um, the, the amount ne, of, of the offer, am I right? Yes. 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 That, uh, did you get professional advice on that? No, so I didn't, I didn't uh, get professional advice. I did the assessment myself. Um, and and I looked, you know, and um, I looked at, at, at uh, the building. Obviously, I look at the price that they offered. I mean, they were they were selling at, and I looked at the fact that okay, I think when I look at this building, maybe an offer this amount might be reasonable. Sometimes, uh, what I would do, I would even go at even if maybe let's say maybe the building is supposed to, I think maybe they are selling let's say maybe three point eight, and I think um, the offer that is reasonable maybe is three million or two point eight. Sometimes what I would want to do, I operate like um, they call it shop steward, whereby I would say I go lower. Maybe I know I'm, I want to pay two point eight. I would go say maybe 2.4 and the seller, we start the negotiating process. You know how the employer and employee negotiate. Yeah, we start the negotiating process and then we end up coming to the amount that I want or even maybe as close as possible to the amount that I want. So that's how, how I do and uh, there's not a, I don't get um, professional help. I think I, I, I follow my gut feel. And then, because sometimes you would waste time getting professional help and you might end up lose the property. By the time you get your professional help, uh, by that time, somebody has already snatched the property. And you must remember, once the offer has been accepted by the seller, even if somebody can come with a better price, that seller cannot go out of that agreement until the 30, month, 30 days have lapsed Remember when you make an offer to purchase, you say, um, uh, this is my offer, I'm buying, and then I need to raise money uh, within 30 days uh, and so on. Yeah, you have found funding or a bond. So as soon as he agrees, he's locked up there on, on that agreement. So if you don't make an offer and you're wasting time going to look for professional advice, by the time you come back, you'd find Juliet has already made an offer. So the seller cannot look at you up until I, I don't get the funding. But chances are maybe TAF is there. They give me the funding, then you will have lost the property. So what I would say is that yes, get professional advice, get friends and so on who can advise you and be careful the friends so they don't snatch the property out of you because it's a doggy world as well. But get uh, advice maybe from somebody that you trust. And then after you got advice uh, and sometimes follow your gut feel. You know, uh, the more you talk with people, you get to learn and have that gut feel of, oh, this is acceptable or this, this is not. And then the, the next question, uh, when I approached TAF, uh, in my case, I was already not employed. I was already hustling. So, um, but I would say, even if you are employed, you can still pursue the um, a, a approach tough if you have property because their requirement is, is not that you shouldn't or should you be employed. All they want is that you, you want, you have got property, you want a property and uh, you are the right candidate to fund. And then, yeah, and if that, they, that, that training that they offered, it was not every day. It was like maybe you would attend say maybe for two days in a month. So you can take leave for, for those two days and attend you know, and be, be empowered in the process. I don't know if I've answered your question. Yes, you did, thank you. Thank you.
I can't. You me so can't hear you. So, I think I think what you're saying is that we must stop with excuses and then just go on and 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 do the thing. Don't wait mm -hmm. to say I wait. I'm waiting for financial advice. Uh, they will ask me to to stop working and all of that. So just go on and do your investment. But let's give U specifically. Specifically. Hi, Dumiso. Uh, thank you. And this is Juliet in the words of Mandoza. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come up, your assessment tool, you touched on it. Good. How do you assess that a building is profitable? And then secondly, how do you assess what it will be tenanted as well, that you'll have full tenants uh, for the area? Okay. Uh, in my case, how I, 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 two things which are very critical is you need to look at the income and expenditure of the building. So your income, you would look at the rent roll. If they've got a managing agent, as, as the seller, you want the rent roll because the sellers need to a record of all the rentals that he gets every month. So I request the rent roll maybe for the past three or four months or even six months possible to see how much income are they generating. And then, uh, and also look at the um, municipality statements. The municipality statements will show you how much is that building paying every month uh, to the municipality. So if you take the income that you get from the, um, from the, the, the records that the seller keeps, and then the amount that he needs to pay to the municipality, already it tells you how much the difference of, of money is going to be there. Okay? Mm -hmm. And then after that, I look at the amount that I would get there and take into consideration that if I buy this property, I still have to pay TAF or FNB or whatever funder. Is the money that I'm going to get here sufficient enough to cover my bond? So, and then another thing which I, I, I look at that is that, okay, say I do cover my bond, will there be some money left so that I can put in the kitty for maintenance purposes? And then if maybe you are unemployed, obviously you'd have to look at whether will there be some money to pay even if yourself some, a little bit of salary. So those are the things which I take into consideration when I assess. Like for an example, recently I went to see a building that was in Randfontein. The building is selling for 4.9 million. And then I looked at the rent, rent, rent roll and the um, um, statement. And I told the seller that it's ridiculous. They can never, nobody's going to buy that building. And the building looks, it looks nice, it's well cared for, but the rentals are very low. And then the, um, the municipality accounts. So there isn't much money. You won't even, I wouldn't even cover my bond with the amount, amount that is left, considering the amount that they're asking. So in that case, the offer that I'm going to put today is actually half of the amount left. Okay, so, I'm not sure if yeah. I'm not sure if you answered the second question for Spe, but I think I think Spe, you've got the gist of what um, Juliet is saying. I'm just concerned about time. Juliet, can okay. we just can we just take the, the last three questions and then okay. um, we can release you have your birthday with your with your daughter. Okay. <laughs> uh, to me. Thank you, Ndumi. So, uh, Sister Juliet, uh, the question I have is what criteria do you use to select a property or to say this I'm going for? To select a property. First, for me, I look at the location for me is very important. Location, location, location. That is number one. And then if it's the property is well located, I looked at the structure. Even if the building is, it's, it looks horrible, uh, maybe maintenance inside, is it the solid structure? If the structure is solid, then I, uh, uh, then I looked at the issue that if I were to fix it, you know, will it be worthwhile or will I get my money back? But I think the most basic important things for me the two things is location, because if you've got your location right, 
then you won't have battle with tenants. And then, um, and then you, location right, you have tenants and then obviously the condition of the building is important because the tenants, they want to, to stay in a building which they know is in good condition and it's safe. So obviously the safety features you put in by yourself, it doesn't have. Hmm. Okay, thank you. Yeah, sorry, Ndumiso. Uh, I can still go, maybe you can, if there are more questions, we can go at, until 12. Okay, no, that's mm. fine. Uh, let, let's see if we can wrap it up though. Uh, mm. Thanks to me, Brian. Uh, good, good morning, good morning, says Juliet. Mm. Um, just a few questions quickly. You've mentioned that um, you would um, assess a structure before buying. This is of course for a brown project. Mm. Um, do you personally assess it or do you consult with professionals because there could um, be hidden stuff that you actually can't see there. And then how, how, how do you work around that? Um, what, 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 what I do, uh, obviously I would do a basic assessment. Mm. And then what I do is that because I want to bind the seller not to sell the property to Ndumiso. Mm. If I see at face value that it looks fine, I put in my offer, but I say subject to mm. me getting a you know confirmation that the structure is fine. Mm. And then the other issues, maybe like the roof and so on, I put it subject to that the seller would fix the roof or, or okay. all those subject to that I think uh, things that I still need to assess. Okay. So with this a loophole if i find those things that i still need to assess they are i'm not happy with then i can still walk away because i've stated in the contract that this contract is subject to me verifying a b and c i see okay and then um with regards to um being trained you know you know for this property game um there at turf you've mentioned that you've been trained at turf do they train you subject to you being financed by them or can just one walk in and say that I am an emerging property investor. I would like to get training. And um, also the speed of finance. You've mentioned Jorge, um, in some cases you would, you would place an offer and then apply for finance, of course. Mm -hmm. Does GPF and TURF as fast in approving uh, Antwila finance within that 30 day period? Are they that fast, or, 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 or do you do you apply like some sort of mitigative and um, you know, um, plans for the thing to be like extended? Okay, um, it, 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 okay. The first question: the issue of training. The training they would offer to people that they have funded. Remember now, they want to make sure that you succeed. So they are giving you the tools. It's like, Juliet, we have funded you we have, uh, to have this property. So here are the tools for you to succeed. Okay. So that's why they would offer training to okay. people they have funded. And then, um, the, speed the, speed of financing. the speed of financing, on the speed of financing, yeah. normally they take about 60 days. So mm. which means if you have done that offer and is within 30 days, then you need to go back and ask for an extension or ask tough to give you a letter that you would give to the seller, which says we are busy doing due diligence. They are asking for an extension for another maybe 30 days. So which is normally acceptable to the seller. Yeah. I see, I see. Okay, okay. No, thank you. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. But then on that, on that, on that one, yeah. I just want to, to give advice. Mm. Should you be in a situation whereby you need to get an extension, please communicate it on time to the seller. Don't wait until the last moment. Because there is a property that I lost because of waiting up until the last moment. So by the time I went to inform them that we are asking for the extension, only to find that the agent already had someone like another buyer. Yeah. 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 So I lost that property because of that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. No. Thank you very much. Thank you. Very are you by any chance, maybe? Lower. <laughs> 
Ayşe de misal alsak karacağız. Yeah, can Ida mute herself? No, me so. Sorry, sorry, sorry. There, there's someone who's um, unmuted and they're making such noise that is interrupting our the, 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 the discussions here. Please, guys, make sure that you unmute yourself. If you're asking questions and you're in a place where there's noise, uh, please just ask the question and mute again, and then you'll only op unmute when you when you need to speak. Uh, Butler? Thank you, Lumi. So, hi, Sis Juliet. Uh, thank you for sharing um, your journey with us. My question has been partly um, answered by Spare's question. I wanted to know on the first building, um, when you acquired it, had it had tenants already? Because you mentioned that you did some partitions uh, on the building and it was in such a, a state that needed renovations. So, um, <clears throat> If it didn't have uh, tenants, which route did you go to in order to acquire tenants for that? Okay, um, the, my first building had tenants. So I okay, just, yeah, I, I just took over those tenants. Uh, I think my first building had about seven, seven, eight. So they were, the six units were empty. So the managing agent, they got me the tenants. That was with the first building. The second building, because of the characters I saw when I went to view the building, in my offer, I put a condition that I want full vacancy. So before they, I could, uh, um, before they could lodge, they had to meet to that condition that the building is vacant. So and tough and forced the, um, the seller to make sure that there is vacancy. So by the, and, and then they came to view that the building is vacant. Once they were satisfied, then they gave the transferring attorneys the go ahead to lodge. And mm -hmm. the reason why is because I didn't want to take on the funny characters that I saw there. Actually, I think going ahead, I would rather get buildings which are vacant and start my own headaches and not take over people's headaches. Because um, on my other, the first building, what I find is that there were tenants who were, who had been staying there for 15 years. So you now you can imagine if the person moved in 15 years ago and the rental was a thousand rent and the, the rental has only been increasing maybe 8%, 10%. When it comes to today, that amount, you find that the rental of that person is below the market rate mm -hmm. rentals. So, and if you are taking them as part of the building, you can't come there and say, hey, the going rates are 5,000 rents, you need to increase the rental. So you just have to carry on with the, those tenants. So for me, I would rather get a full vacant building get my new tenants and charge them 5,000 if I think the market rate is 5,000. Thank you, Ceci. Nzuzo. Um, hello, everyone. This is Juliet. Um, thank you, Ekasi. I hope you can hear me. Yes, we um, can. I just have a, uh, a question. Some of it has been partly answered. Um, it's about getting fi funding or finance from, from TEF. Mm -hmm. uh, the question is, um, do, does TERF uh, uh, demand that you get some kind of, of proof or assurance of tenancy uh, for your buildings? Like if, I, if you tell them I'm going to have uh, 20 tenants in, in this building, do they require like some uh, 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 signing or upfront or do they take your word for it? And then maybe as an umbrella question is, um, do they want like a business plan um, or is it just simply putting in the numbers to say, these are my numbers, uh, this is my business case and this is how it's gonna work. And then did you have that experience uh, on your first one? 
and was it easy to do it? Um, I mean, not literally as easy as ABC, but like, was it a simple process to follow? Um, that's my question. I think, um, obviously what happens with TAF is that they are going to sort of put a business case to the credit committee because you would have um, the portfolio manager that maybe would be handling your case. And then obviously they interview you, request all the paperwork, but I think they make it so easy for, for us uh, because some of us, we don't have experience in terms of doing business plans and stuff like that. So the, um, that's a, a manager, like for an example, I've been so fortunate um, in, 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 in my case that the person that is assisting me or I'm under, the portfolio manager that I'm under is uh, Mr. Linda Dotuan. And they have a, a, a sort of the guide, they assist that, you know, in putting together the, um, the business case of the property that you want to, you're applying funding for. Because remember that business or plan or whatever, they need to present it to the credit, credit committee. The credit committee then we can, which can approve or disapprove your funding. So in this case, I didn't have to go with my own ready business plan to say, here's my business plan and so on. Obviously I came with my funding and a business plan that this and that, but they interviewed me, they grilled me, they asked me questions going backwards and forward and so on. Obviously they asked me the numbers, what do you think the rentals are going to be and, and do more. That's why I think they take a longer period, like 60 days to, to do their approval because it's a back and forth question and answer uh, 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 sessions to, 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 to put together this, uh, this plan, which they would present. And uh, another thing, I didn't have to give a guarantee that I am going to get these amounts. So they wanted to uh, uh, upfront, they wanted to know if that is possible and then why and how maybe am I going to market, you know, all these things to justify that, you know, I think those rentals are achievable because say for an example, you'd look at the area that, that I mean, say for an example, if I need to justify this, these rentals are achievable, then I can look at other buildings within the area, what are their going rentals in that area? And I said, if those buildings they are charging these much, so these are ach achievable. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if you have answered your question. Yes, yeah, no, thank you. Uh, Kanye, I will give you the last word. Let's go to Ngonyama. Uh, thank you, Ndumiso. And also thank you, Juliet, for your time. Um, my sister, I wanted to ask, because most of these buildings in Joburg, uh, they, they've got old infrastructure. Do yeah. you think it's a, it's a good idea to, to, to put in both uh, prepaid meters for electricity and water or you would only go for the electricity ones hey my advice <laughs> put prepaid my brother <laughs> prepaid 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 you'll get less headaches because um currently okay my my, my first building i put prepaid meters for electricity but i didn't because of the um, infrastructure issues, I didn't put in the prepaid meter for water. But now what I found is that it created, created a lot of billing issues, a lot of fights from the tenants because now Juliet has got a big family, there are four in the house and Dumiso is staying on his own. Dumiso doesn't want to pay the same amount of water as Juliet because Juliet, they are using more water, they are full, and Dumiso feels that they are subsidizing Juliet. So now as a result of that, I ended up to alleviate all those problems which were forever and complaints constantly, I ended up putting sub, -meter, sub water meters. And since I've done that, install those, then I, you know, less headaches. But also what I would like to add is that those prepaid meters, be um, electricity or water, just make sure that you, you monitor them as well. Because um, a couple of months ago, I had an, an, a situation whereby I was so sure that I've got these prepaid meters, I don't have to worry. Only to find that they breached the prepaid meters 
Mm. So all along my tenants have been having free electricity. And unfortunately, uh, um, these are submitters. So I still have to pay the municipality because the municipality bills me. And then, you know, then I sub divide the electricity to the tenants. So, which means at the end of the day, I'm still liable for the electricity. So as soon as they breached the meters, I wasn't paying attention. The next thing I found myself with a bill of electricity of 45,000 rands. So had I have managed and monitored, I wouldn't have found that situation. So don't take it for granted that we have got the prepaid meters and everything is perfect. We need to be hands on. Well, thank you, my sister. Yes, yeah, that's great advice. Let's go to Kanye, you have the last word. Hi. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, great. No, um, Juliet, I just wanted to say congratulations and well done. I am just uh, so amazed, um, you know, by your grace, because I think uh, your, your, your grace belies the the trauma and the hardships that go with putting deals together. Um, but uh, we, we just have to persevere. And, um, you know, we have to put assets on the ground. Uh, you know, I'm always just trying to encourage people, um, you know, keep putting those assets on the ground because um, they are going to be needed now and into the future. So um, very well done. And I am looking forward to being part of your winner's circle and being part of um, just having tea together. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks, Kanye. Yes, thanks. Thanks, Kanye. And uh, I must just say that we met with uh, Kanye through these roundtable sessions. So I'm, I'm grateful that there was a lot of people here today. And I, I hope when Kanye comes, we are going to have double the number of people today because as you as you hear from the figure that Juliet is a small fish when it comes to Kanye. Okay. But uh, yes. <laughs> Juliet has done has done very well. Kanye, I see you unmuted yourself. You don't want to see, you don't want me saying Juliet's a small fish. No, 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 no small fish. No, don't do that. Don't, but it's a good competition. I mean, it's you know. <laughs> I, I also look forward to meeting you, Kanye. <laughs> yes, yes, you see. <laughs> yeah, I want I want that tea to happen, uh, Kanye and Juliet. And you guys must send me photos if I'm not invited um, for the tea. <laughs> just just the last question from me, um, says Juliet. But most people they invite they invest in single dwellings, which would be. 500,000, 300,000, 200,000, depending on where you are. Mm. Now, for most people, it's difficult to make that jump. It's difficult to comprehend that I was investing in 200,000. I was going to the bank to borrow 200,000. But now I need to go and borrow 3 million rents, 2.5 mm. million rents, others even 10 or even, even higher than that. Psychologically, how do you move? Um, maybe it was not a big issue for you because you were already hustling and doing all these other deals on the on the site. But how do you move from this thing of, of the small houses also going with the small loan and then now to, to say I'm doing a bigger, much bigger deal? Um, for me, I, I think you need uh, uh, as a person, you know, they say if your your dreams they are not, they don't scare you, then they are not big enough. I believe as people, we need to dream big. I dream big, uh, you know, you need to dream big. Don't be scared, a, a fear, because what keeps people in those small investments is fear. Oh, I'm not good enough. Oh, who can borrow me the money and so on. Stop that fear, take away the fear, dream big, and you, you know, and, and, and the opportunities are there, institutions are there who are willing to, to fund. So, you know, the limitation is, has always, for most black people, has always been money. 
not having money to access bigger properties and so on. So now if there are institutions like your GPF, like your TAF, who are out there willing to fund if you come with a big, with, 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 with a good property, go for it. Don't limit yourself. If you wanna limit yourself, fine. Me, I'm not gonna limit myself. I'm going, you see, I want to get a bigger property. Just like Kaini, I want those 50 million things and so on, 30 million. Because, uh, you know, I, I was listening to, I think it was uh, Steve Harvey. Yes, he was saying, people return most of the time to ask God for little things. You ask God, help mm -hmm. me with this debt. Help me with mm -hmm. these small things. Let's, let's stop. And he says, stop wasting God's time. Mm -hmm. Go for big things. Mm -hmm. Don't, don't be saying God, because God will give you that little you've asked. Then you come again, you come knocking again. Give me this. He says, stop wasting God's time. Go big. And that is where you're going to see growth. So uh, for me, I think what made me to be able to go for, to start going for block of buildings is because I dealt with my fear. I stopped limiting myself to say, Julia, you only qualify for small houses. I, I don't think I qualify for how small houses. I don't think I even qualify for those buildings that I have. I think I qualify for bigger buildings and I'm going to go for bigger things. So join me, let's go. <laughs> yes, I think this is the perfect way to end our, our session. And I'm inspired by, by you inspired by what you just said now about going big and stop wasting God's time. In fact, Steve Harvey says, God created the world, God created the universe in seven days. And we're here asking him for 200,000. And mm -hmm. yes, Sister Juliet, you've been an, inspira an inspiration. Like, um, I think it was Jabu who says it, who said it, you are our for the, for the for the weekend and may all your, your light shine brighter and uh, have go out and do more and more things. And I hope that in the near future, we're going to be able to catch up with you and um, uh, have you again uh, to come and share your, your new experience because it does seem that you are, you are moving. And um, highly appreciate and thank God for people like you and everybody else that is doing good out there, whatever that they are doing. Thank you, Sissy. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me and all of the best to everyone. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Bye. Bye, bye bye. Ladies and gentlemen, there we've been. Uh, we, we, we had, I think what Ursus Juliet is saying to us is that we must work hard. Once we have chosen property as your, your passion, spend time doing it because like she says those those following your gut in terms of determining the price it's you, your gut only works if you've been there you spend time like she's saying that she, she on her spare time her hobby is looking for properties once you are there you spend time looking for properties you formalize yourself with the area you formalize yourself with the properties that are in the area. You formalize yourself with the kind of people that work and play in the area. So you know what the area is about. And therefore, when you get a, a property that is for sale, it's not difficult to then say, I think I have a knee-jerk reaction in terms of what is this property going to be? Because the market is not going to wait for you. So I think that's where we, we need to be. She says it, she said it better than I can even try and summarize it. So I'm not even going to even be going there. What I'm going to be talking to you about is what's coming next. So in this series of investing in the inner city, we had Unaba that owns 105 flats in the city of Tobek. And he came to share with us his experience. We then had Taf, the, the funder or a financier in the inner city who told us how they uh, finance the, the properties. Today, we had a, a live or a practical 
a way that Taft has their financing in the form of Uses Juliet. And she shared with us experience of what has happened. Next week, we have our resident mentor, Unigel Adrianse. For the EDPF students, come with your questions that relate to, to the program. For everybody else, come with your questions that relate to, to properties. Nigel has done everything that is there to do in, in properties. He's the person that myself and Uses Juliet are learning from. We are both in the same uh, program and th there's other people that are also in, in this call that are also part of the EDPF. We're working very closely with um, EDPF. That's why we have Nigel almost every in every series, which equates to basically every month. So last next week we have Ingu Nigel, who is going to be talking to us about the same theme of investing in the inner city. You your job is to come back with questions so that you get all your property related questions uh, sorted out. So the series after Nigel, the series will be done. Now this is this is a bit about me. If anyone wants to know anything about my coaching and my mentoring programs, please stay online. Let's discuss that. And then we then see how we can help each other. Like Uses Juliet said, you need to speak to people who, are, who have done it, who, who have done the things that you also want to do. That person does not have to be me. If you want, you can uh, ask Uses Juliet, the, the questions, if you have means, if there is a pending question that anyone actually thinks was not answered by Uses Juliet or something that comes up, email it to me. I will send it through to her and see if uh, we can get that answer uh, from her. I'm sure she's, she's, she's been gener very generous with her time. I'm sure she won't mind. In fact, this is the, my experience with property investors. They out there to share with anyone. So don't limit your sharing of the knowledge or don't limit uh, in terms of who you can speak to, only to me, speak to anyone that's out there that's doing what you would want to do. But what I'm saying is that if you would want to know about my mentorship program, please stay on stay online. Let's, let's talk about how I can assist you. For people that have been here, they know it by now. I'm going to say it. I've said it 100 times before. No man ever stops, ever steps in the same river twice, for it's not the same river and he is not the same man. We've learned a lot from Uses Juliet. My notes are full. I hope yours are also full. By the end of today, in fact, as I'm speaking to you now, I'm not the same person. I always thought that I need to find a building of 25 million rands and do the jump from where I am to where I want to be. Now I know that I can go out and find a building that I think I would be able to, would, would fit my, my strategy. And I learned that from Uses Juliet. So I'm not, I'm not the same person. And I'm going to go over these notes again uh, tonight and then see what is it that I can, I, can, I can pick up. For you, I hope you are also not the same person. I hope that when you meet next Saturday with Nigel, you will not be the same person because it will not be the same air, it will not be the same date, it will just be the same year, but myself and almost everybody else that is on this call will hopefully be different. With that said, thank you so much for having joined us. And thank you so much for having spent the piece of your life with us uh, this morning. One thing, please go and um, like our, follow our, our social media, and uh, please subscribe to our, our um, what's this, YouTube, because that's where you're going to get the gold. I see some people are already on the weekend. So from me to you, thank you so much. Go and enjoy your, your weekend and have a productive week uh, next week. And uh, yeah, cheers, bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Dumiso. Bye. Thank you, Tandy, bye-bye.
Thank you, Sister Juliet, as well. <laughs> <laughs> she just left. Yeah, no, she, she, yeah. she, I'm sure she got it, Tande. I do me so all the way from the Eastern Cape. Yeah, okay, but thanks, Mr. Gaz, man. Thanks for coming through. <laughs> okay. Thanks. This online thing is working. We even have people from the Eastern Cape and uh, Kimbali. And Eta? It's very inspiring to see people buying so much properties. I had even during the week when Nigel said,